All right, everybody, this is Ross the Fig Boss. In today's video, we're gonna review a fig variety called LSU Holie, Huye, or LSU Holier, depending on how you guys wanna pronounce it. I was told it's Huye. Um, and this is a fig, for whatever reason, I just never got around to reviewing. I never did its own separate video on this and reviewed it. I know that we've talked a lot about it in the past in other videos. Um, I don't know why exactly I've never done its own video, but here we are. Um, it really has become, in my mind, especially after viewing it this season, a really special fig. Uh, every year we learn more and more about these varieties. This year I learned that it's also just one of the hardiest fig varieties you could grow. Um, I know that this year wasn't exactly uh, a blizzard. You know, we didn't have like a terrible winter, but certainly this variety uh, survived 10 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, we have some older wood back here, thicker wood that is gray or silver color that survived. And then even two suckers down here at the base, which I thought you know, would never survive. They were a foot and a half off the ground, really thin twigs. Um, those survived the winter and then they sprouted with no damage, all this new growth. And on that new growth has a lot of fruit on it. And it's ripening here as early as August 19th, August 20th in, the, in 2022. So that, that means to me that this is obviously it's you know it's been well documented that's a an early variety ripens right alongside hardy chicago uh 10 days earlier was things like ron de bordeaux and little ruby mitchell and or floria so it's an early variety hardy variety and i think the one of the best parts about it is that it will set fruits in even the lowest light conditions the requirements to set these fruit buds are so low that even if it doesn't survive the winter, it gets killed back to the base. You have it even in a high dense system like I do. There's a tree there, there's a tree right here, there's a tree right there. It's surrounded by trees. It's very dense in here. There's not a lot of light. Light is a premium in this spot and it still produces super, super well. Uh, so for me, I would argue this is probably your best bet although I wouldn't grow figs in a low light condition but if I had to choose one variety, it would be this one. And so for that reason, it sets very easily. And you can make an argument based on how easy it is for a variety to set fruit could also translate to how productive a fig is. Because if you had a given area, let's just say that we're looking at a six by six area that we have a tree in. And in that six by six area, how many fruits can we ripen? How many fruits can we produce? And well, you would argue that probably the tree, the variety that could produce the most amount of leaves and the most amount of branches and still be able to produce fruit on those branches would be the most productive. It would produce the most, the highest quantity of fruits. And because of that, this variety has less light requirements and therefore is able to have its branching a little bit closer than other varieties. The foliage can be a bit more dense. You can have more leaves and still have the fruit set that you're looking for. So for that reason, I think this variety really does produce super, super well. Um, and it makes sense because it's, it's related to Celeste. And if you've seen any older Celeste trees, they all produce like a crazy amount of fruit. Um, you know, even the other ones, the other hybrids that were bred with Celeste that LSU released or even unofficially released, like LSU Tiger, you know, LSU Champagne, uh, these figs produce a ridiculous amount of fruit. LSU purple is the same thing. Um, so for my money, I would just say that overall, this fig has like everything going for it uh, in terms of the fruits itself. So I would say in terms of the tree, it has everything going for it. Um, <clears throat> we'll look at the tree in a minute here, but let me show you guys the fruit itself. In terms of the fruit itself, I think there really is no other better performing fig in this particular flavor profile. Um, we'll talk about that in a minute, but you can see here the outside looks nice. It's beautiful. It doesn't look too like it's been through a lot of problems, although it did rain not last night, but the night before and the night before that. And this fig was ripening. So it looks pretty much unfazed or not phased at all by that rain as a lot of other varieties have. Uh, I'm not even seeing a lot of cracking. There's no splitting. The eye is closed. Typically it will crack down the side. I've seen that. 
actually there's a big big crack right there on the side. But the shape is good, the way that it hangs is good, and the skin is pretty decent. Um, I do find that the skin can be a bit thick on this fig, a bit tougher, and you eat, actually can feel that when you eat it. And I actually find that doesn't help the split and crack resistance. But let me show you guys right now the inside, because it pretty much is if you let it ripen long enough the inside turns a bit red and it gets a fruitier flavor to it uh, I would classify this as a honey fig first not everyone's cup of tea but the nice part is with this flavor profile is it combines those berry notes in there maybe not as intense as you might think definitely not as intense as you might think but they're there and for that reason I think it has a unique flavor profile and in that unique flavor profile um, you know it does produce the best some of the other ones i've grown are albo and babera branca i would argue those are very highly flavored figs uh, but this one here still tastes great and performs the best and the ones that perform the best get right get the most right the most consistent and Usually the fig that is the most ripe, the most consistent, tastes the best here. Yeah, so it's very sweet. Actually, the skin on that one was a, a bit softer. Really nice sugar flavor, a figure flavor combined with honey, a little bit of melon in there, and a slight amount of berry flavor. So this fig has got like a lot of different things going on within it. Um, and for my money, again, I, I just think in that category, you just can't beat it. If you go down in the description of this video, you'll see my spreadsheet with the flavor profile listing there. And one of the categories is called fruity honey. And this is one of them in it. And I'm telling you, it just does perform the best. Uh, Albo, I really liked it performed. It was an early ripener. It tasted really great, but the eye is a bit open. Um, same thing with Monaco. I find it the same thing. The eye is a bit open mid-season fig this one here it just seems to have everything going for it and it really came into its own i think this season after it has you know had those suckers actually survive it has a structure to ripen the fruit from rather than ripening it on these on these suckers that come up from the base and are very vigorous and like kind of like a water shoot but even those water shoots will produce fruit i just think the fruit actually from these suckers is totally different this year and much better in terms of flavor uh, and performance the overall fig just seems like a lot has changed so for me actually i would put this in my top 20. i think this actually deserves a spot in a lot of people's collection you don't find this flavor profile in many other places in a great package like this um, it is a small to medium sized fig. I know some of them have definitely gotten bigger than this. Um, I do want to note that the skin, as I said, just really quickly, um, tends to crack or it can crack when the water hits the skin. Uh, so it's not like, I guess, the other Celeste figs that you might see where the skin or the water is kind of, you know, shed right off of the fruit. And I've noticed that in the past, but this year it seems like, especially with this rain that came in, it seems to be performing a lot better, which I don't know exactly why that is. I'm gonna to continue to evaluate that. And if things change with that, I will make a separate video or maybe talk about it online. Because on the blog, we're gonna write about this fig and we'll talk about it in our final review as well. Um, but for the most part, the skin has just improved quite a bit. And even when you eat it, I typically notice that the synconium, the outer part of it, is very different than the pulp. You can definitely feel that there's a separation there between the pulp and the outer shell of the fruit. So this time around, I'm not tasting that. And sometimes, you know, a lot of figs are more uniform and you don't necessarily pick that up with two different distinct textures, but this one here is very uniform. It's very good. I'd say it's probably a, I don't know, 
maybe higher. Um, I think that tastes just as good as maybe even a Campaneri that's well ripened. So anyway, guys, thank you for watching that one. That was LSU Huye. We'll talk to you guys soon. Check out the blog, check out our spreadsheet and hit that subscribe button. We'll see you guys soon. Take care.